giant swords are not too slow and not too heavy to be deadly. They are practical. Okay, let me think of an eloquent, persuasive response. No. All right, so with a little more seriousness, are giant swords practical in real life? Well, let's do a bit of a visual experiment. I figured a prop would be neat for this video, so I thought I'll just grab some scrap lumber I have lying around and quickly cut out a basic shape. Three days of filling the garage with sawdust later, we've got this. Well, this was the only grip tape I had left, but after staring at it for several hours during editing, I now realize mistakes have been made. All right, so what do you think is more dangerous and harder to evade? This? Or that? This? Or that? This? Or that? Can simply dropping a large, heavy, sharpened metal bar on a target do some damage? Sure. Is it easy to hit a moving target that doesn't want this to be dropped on them? Mm. Sorry about the lame background. The garage is just where I have the most space. So I exaggerated how sluggish this is for comedic effect. It is just made of wood. So the problem is less the weight. It's more how much is pulling on you. If I hold it right where it's balanced, it's not so bad. Right, but you can see the balance is fairly far out. But if I now hold it like this, the more I lower it, the harder it gets. So it wouldn't be so much of a problem if you could simply drop it. All right, just let it smash into the ground because then you don't even have to stop it so you don't have to exert yourself in trying to decelerate this behemoth. But then what? <laughs> then, you know, they do the video game thing of either rolling or just sidestepping or just stepping back to evade it. And then during the time it takes you to hoist this thing back up and attack again, they can mow you down. So funnily enough, the old Dark Souls roll to win tactic actually makes practical sense against an enemy with far reaching attacks that can't be blocked and that have a lot of recovery time in between. Although there are plenty of moments where it only works because of invincibility frames. And stepping is a safer, more down-to-earth alternative. But against a giant weapon, maybe sometimes you would just have to fling yourself a little farther. Now, if the sword is not quite that stupidly heavy, because maybe it's, it's a composite blade, so the core is made of something lighter than steel, and then the edges are made of steel, or if the whole thing is made of some super strong, lightweight fantasy alloy, and it's heavy, but not impossibly so, or you have super strength, whatever, there are more things you can do. For example, if you swing and they dodge and then they come in, you can swing right back up. You know, particularly with a double-edged sword, you know, you can cut with the other side and just go whoosh. Now, it still is going to be fairly sluggish compared to a regular sword because you have to decelerate it, stop it, and then accelerate it again. So it would be better to keep it moving and bring it around for another swing instead of just letting it crash to the ground. And that's what you do with a real historical great sword.
Prof. Eymann, what you would call tail guard in historical martial arts, with such a big sword, I can simply rest it on the ground, and then when I'm ready to attack, I swing it up like this. It's much more awkward on the other side because of crossed hands, but one thing I could do is pinch the flat of the blade like this and hold it here. All right, that's a lot easier. And now I can still swing it. The funny thing is, I can even do it with one hand as long as I then use the other hand when I need to control it. Because when swinging it, I'm powering it with the core, not just with my arms. So, and by the way, the montante technique of kickstarting the sword works here too. You just have to kick a little bit harder than you would a more normal sized sword. So why do smaller historical great swords work while this size, at least if it's made of all steel, doesn't? Simply because you are able to keep moving the great sword and keep using the momentum, which is a lot harder with something like this. I mean, you might be able to with enough strength Right, it's just going to be more sluggish. So the reason it works is the reach. You know, if I perform a false such cut like this and immediately come back around, you may just not have enough time. You evade the first false such cut, but then I step back and come around and cut again. Right, so you may not have enough time to rush in while that's happening. If I screw up and smash the sword into the ground and now here they come, I might still be able to pull it up to at least defend myself, right? Or perhaps I can raise it up to just present the point and make them think twice about rushing in. So it's not completely ridiculous as long as the thing is not too heavy for you to handle. You know, as long as you have the strength, be it natural or magically enhanced, you can actually pull it off, I'll say that, but generally as far as real world application goes, obviously we don't fight with swords anymore outside of sports and recreation, but if there was an application, then you could maybe make this work with enough specialized training. I don't really see the point because a conventional sword is more efficient and takes less time to learn, but Aside from that, the one thing I do find useful with this is an exercise tool, a fun exercise tool. Because, you know, if you just keep swinging this around, you know, say you just do a bunch of cuts, the nice thing is that this is basically a full body workout. Because you can't just do it with your arms, you know, you just, <laughs> this is not really happening. You need to actually, um, decelerate and stop it with your core and, and your lower back in particular. It can strengthen the lower back pretty well. So if you do a couple of swings like this and then switch side, it's definitely harder on this side. Anyway, you get the idea. Thanks for watching. Hope you had fun. Check out my other videos too. Take care, folks.